I was like, um, I had some money in my own personal bank account. The business had twelve thousand. Mm. I sent over the twelve thousand. Excuse me, I sent over six hundred from my personal account into the business account. Then paid payroll, and wow. then immediately had no money in the bank account, like at all. Yeah. Years, to to the point to where I was like. What am I gonna say on Instagram and Facebook and to my family and friends tomorrow to let them know that like it was a great run, but it's over with? Mm. And um, that's when like the resilience and the grit and all of those mm -hmm. things kick in. And I was just like, bro, there's no way that tomorrow I can go and tell people that this thing didn't work if I didn't exhaust every option that mm. I have. I just, I wouldn't be able to live. I with feel myself, that. You yeah, know? So yeah, yeah. I was like, bro, I'm gonna try whatever I can tomorrow, and if it don't work tomorrow, then cool. So it be just it. wasn't what it's supposed to be. Right. But I went home that day. I took a shower, mm -hmm. and I was just, bro. I was I was talking about this this morning. I was so just like drained that I couldn't even stand up in the shower. I'm just mm. sitting in the shower, bro. And that's when I was like, wow, I have like. People have seen massive drops. People mm. have seen, you know, NBA players and influencers, but I have zero dollars right now. Mm. Nothing at all. And I was like, what matters? And that's what goes to what we talked about. My family, <laughs> my close friends, my character, my morals, my values, my virtue, my mm. relationship with who I believe created me. Good people, what's up, what's good, man? Bless be your host, Caleb Smith, host of the 3 Millie Podcast. Today, we have a very special guest in the building. You've already seen him before. You've probably seen him on IG Live, giving y'all a game. Um, earn your leisure, killing it, love that interview. Social proof, shout out to the great David Shans, Ash Cash. You've seen him everywhere, man. He is really killing it for our age group, our generation. Love seeing him, and today he's about to give out so much game. We got D. Justin Phillips from Support Black Colleges. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Man, I really appreciate it. Humble, bro, humble. Man, so many times from, you know, hearing your story, you kill it talking about ads, mm -hmm. talking about merch, all that stuff. Yeah. But I think one thing that really gets, like, highlighted is you as a person. And just, man, like, hearing you talk about your story, who you are as a person, I'm like, yo, like, this, this guy's, like, super, super dope, man. Nah, I appreciate and one thing that, like, I constantly just hear you talk about is providing value. Mm -hmm. So for Justin, I mean, uh, millions probably already know about Support Black Colleges, how that whole journey just started. Mm -hmm. But Justin, man, as a person, is somebody who I think and pretty much know now is extremely humble, super nice dude, killing the game. But what drives you, man, each day just to give out value day in, day out? Give out value? Um, I think it's like... Uh just knowing how selfish it is to not. Mm -hmm. um, I think once I realized that uh, a lot of people's journeys and visions and what they want to get out of life will be attached to some of the things that I can relinquish them from. So yeah. it's like, you know, if I could wake up and give somebody a bar or mm. a gym or an ad tactic or whatever it may be, yeah. that might be able to set them free financially, spiritually, mentally, or whatever, mm -hmm. then you know, who am I not to, you know, wake up and give that value out that might be able to start the process in a family, like someone gave me the information to start the process in mind, to start helping them out. So I think um, a lot of times, you know, even entrepreneurs, we start mm -hmm. to tie it into success and monetary gain and mm. wealth and things of that nature. Yeah. But I try to shoot for the, the passive impact rather than the passive income mm -hmm. um, because I believe that, you know, it's, it's just super selfish, bro. Like, <laughs> it, honestly, like, yeah. it's very selfish to know that you have information that can help release a lot of people and you keep it to yourself. And mm. I think that if you're an entrepreneur, you're not sharing all the information that you're getting is because you're not gaining it fast enough. So mm. I like to move from the abundance type of mindset where it's like, I give this information so freely because I acquire so much so fast. So yeah. as long as I can give it away, it's also, it's doing a few things for me, actually. Um, you know, you forget most of the things that you don't share. So yeah. I share the information to retain it, mm. for one. Um, and then also, hopefully it can help some people, you know, start to free themselves up. Yeah, so um, in those times of sharing great information, great game, great value, how do you feel when somebody tells you, yo, Justin, like that right there changed my life. Yeah. How do you feel when you hear that sometimes? It's just uh, extremely humbling. Yeah. Um, bro, if you knew, like, uh, you know, you hear a lot of the stuff that I talk about, like in interviews and whatnot, mm -hmm. but it's just so much other stuff too. Like yeah. the type of person I used to be, like, it's just crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, four, three, four, four and a half years ago, I was a completely different person. Yeah. So um, it's humbling to know that I've been able to come throughout my journey to be able to 
actually communicate good information and just mm -hmm. change who I was right off of sheer like changing my mind neuroplasticity mm. like <laughs> changing my brain yeah because I doubt if I really wanted to yeah um so uh, I think it's great you know to yeah. be able to just to hear that it's like very I, I love the admiration but yeah I don't I try not to like sit too much into it I feel that man transformation three and a half years ago four years ago completely yeah. different Justin Houston, Texas, yeah. sleeping on the floor, yeah, doing do. things, you know, that you aren't, like, supposed to be doing, still yeah. sleeping on the floor. I love that mindset. Um, if, if somebody told Justin today, 2022 Justin, uh -huh. yo, you would have a brand that's seen on NBA 2K, uh -huh. uh, State Farm commercials, uh -huh. Chris Paul, yeah. Giannis, Greek Freak, right. <laughs> Donovan Mitchell, right? Yeah. What would you say to that on Justin who's sleeping on the floor trying to figure things out, right. hustling? Trying to just find like that next quick dollar. Would have never moved. What would you say? What, what do I say to that person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, thank you. I yeah. thought you were saying like, what would I say to myself? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, to, to that type of person that's trying to get through it, trying to yeah. figure it out. Uh, environment is everything, bro. Mm -hmm. That was the first thing. Um, I think what I had, the biggest thing that I had to realize is that there's a few things that make like a CEO type of character and like values and morals mm -hmm. and one of the things that i realized was like i read an article and it was like the average ceo reads 50 books a year mm. average american reads one book a year i was below <laughs> average i wasn't wow. i was not didn't read any mm. so i said man what is the like lever that i can pull that is the cheapest lever for me to pull that can hopefully get me to ceo status mm. and it was ten dollar book you know <laughs> if i could if i can read if i can change one thing about myself which was reading books and get on the trajectory of reading one book a week which is 52 years or yeah 52 weeks in a year and you break it down like then, that then maybe i could you know try to start being or thinking similar to you know your jeff bezos and your mm -hmm. all of these types of ceo guys yeah so for that person that's in that jam like I, like i was it's like one you got to audit your environment because mm. the, the biggest thing that i found was I was a great person, not in the best environment. And mm. your environment, you're definitely going to be a product of your environment. So um, the hard part, though, is that like a lot of times it's family and friends and <laughs> people that you grew up with that are around. And I was in that situation. So it was, you know, four or five people, all my cousins are people that I call brothers and mm. sisters and whatnot. And I was just like, man, I walked into the house one day and I was like, this is not where I'm supposed to be. I'm destined for more than this and I feel a greatness inside of me and this mm -hmm. is not what it should look like. But mm -hmm. I also realized too that the outside world is just a direct reflection of who you are on the inside. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, like I need to get my shit together. Yeah. So that's when I started to, uh, you know, give that piece of advice to picking up books. Um, mm -hmm. And then also taking that advice of, if you can get out of the environment, then just completely uproot yourself and yeah. move somewhere else or go to a different place or whatever it may be. For me, it was moving from Houston to Atlanta right. um, and leaving everything else behind. Mm. And, um, and you know, one thing I realized on that road, on that road trip there, mm. it was a Wednesday and it was Bible study for the <laughs> church that I went to. So I turned Bible study on in the car mm -hmm. and it was just talking about, if you're thinking about traveling, leave. If you're thinking mm. about doing this, then go. God will meet you in the middle. What's the gotta, chances? But you got to go <laughs> to the middle for him to pull mm. you out on the other side. If you right. stay where you at, he can't meet you there. Mm. And I was like, oh, that's crazy. So, mm -hmm. you know, I would say to that person, like, wherever you feel called to go, just meet him in the middle. You know, mm. whoever it is you believe in, the source, God, universe, Buddha, I don't care. Like, you know, mm -hmm. you're going to have to make some necessary sacrifices to mm -hmm. get to where you want to go. And yeah. it may start with your environment. It may start with your friend group. It may start with just taking in more information. Mm. But whatever is the smallest thing that you can do to try to get on that path just try that out first yeah that's good game making that move that's not easy yeah new environment mm -hmm. brand new city um what was that whole experience and transition like from going yeah. from houston which is a dope city to now yeah. atlanta moving in with corey yeah, yeah. reading books for what yeah, 90 yeah, days yeah, being yeah. quiet to yeah. yourself what was that incubation period like of just trying to get right what was that like for you um, it was just a switch in my yeah. lifestyle, but it was something that I felt called to do. It mm -hmm. felt right. Um, because before I even moved from Atlanta, I mean, excuse me, to Houston to Atlanta, I yeah. was like, I would read in the morning, I would go for a walk and <laughs> like listen to affirmations and things of that nature. Yeah. But then when I left, it was like, okay, like it's real. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not by my mom, I'm mm. not by my friends, my family, the 
regular things that comfort I knew, zone somewhere wasn't in that at all so yeah i knew one person which mm. is Corey. wow and he <laughs> this is very interesting like because he knew the old me mm. you know what i'm saying so i went I graduated, he went on his side, I went on my side. Right, right. And then I was doing whatever I was doing. That's right. Like and then when I moved down there, he's remembering college just <laughs> drinking and partying yeah. and having his way and doing mm-hmm. whatever. So then it's always interesting because it's like he was like, Bro, who are you? Like, mm-hmm. you know, when he first met like met the new me, he was like, Bro, what? Like you in your room, like you this and that. So I think I never thought about it like that, but I think it's important to bring up is like when you move to that new environment, even old people that you may know may still see the the old you, mm. and you gotta really truly believe that you know the new person that you are, and like act in those character traits of the type of person that you want to be. Mm. Because I found that when you're trying to be a new person, it's more so about like winning the vote with yourself. Mm. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like I'm not trying to be to read daily i'm becoming a reader Mm. you know like i'm not trying to be someone that works out i want to be like an athlete and Mm. the character traits of a reader they read daily the Mm. character traits of an athlete they work out like Mm. so i align myself with those values of the types of things that that type of person does and i started to to do those on a daily basis Mm. and um that first 30 days which this mindset behind it was I mean, I have nothing to go back to. Mm. You know, it's like either either I'm going to make this work. Worst come to worst, though, I'll just end up right where I was. Wow. But I know how this feels. So, like, I don't know how success feels. I have to though, try. So I'd rather try mm. to see what yeah. that feels like but because I know what this feels like, and I'm mm. not very fond of it. So um, that 30 to 60 days was um, – the business I was doing was growing Instagram accounts. I think mm-hmm. I, you might have heard me say that of course. before. So you was growing, making like five k a month off of that. I, I think? was I was making seven hundred bucks a month when I first got to Atlanta. Got you. Then I grew that to five thousand. That's good a month stuff. In yeah. the first thirty days. Yeah. And that came from um, you know hopefully this helps someone. Uh, I realized that a lot of what we think is is that we need to add new things to our life, hmm. and um, we think oh Justin's doing his goal writing every day and Justin's reading every day but there's certain things that you have that I lack Mm. I don't watch TV Mm -hmm. I don't play video games Mm. I don't drink alcohol Mm. smoke weed I Mm. don't do any of those things so Mm -hmm. there may be it might not be an addition that you need to make (laughs) to your life or your routine but it might be some things that you need to take away Mm. Um, so instead of thinking what can I add to my life I was thinking what can I subtract what like my my boy Neo he always says like what are you willing to give up to go up Mm. so I was like okay I'm willing to give up sex drinking Mm. uh, weed watching TV, all of these things, I gave those up for at least, like, you know, 30 days. And yeah. then I realized, too, that applies to business. Hmm. So most people are trying to add on, I need to do Facebook ads, Instagram ads, <laughs> YouTube ads, Google ads, mm. TikTok organic, SEO, yeah. all of these things. And it's like, bro, <laughs> you really just need to focus on what makes you money in the business right now. Mm. And I, I bring that up because in the social media business, the three things that made me money were reaching out to clients, servicing the clients, and then onboarding them. Mm. And I said, I'm not going to do anything else besides those three things for the mm. next 30 days and just see what happens. Wow. And crafted my sales scripts, reached out to 10 to 14 people an hour, much like I tell people mm-hmm. to do with the influencers. When you're yep. trying to get people's brands or influencers to wear your brand. And uh, did only that for 30 days and went from 700 bucks a month to 5K a month in social media clients. And then after that, I found, which is important for people making that move too, I found a place for me to go to network with like-minded individuals, mm. um, which was the gathering spot out yeah. here in Atlanta, getting yeah. a membership there, mm-hmm. finding hoop sessions to go to, mm. going to the library and getting mm. new books and meeting people there, mm. um, going on meetup.com and seeing if there's any Shopify meetups I could go to, wow. changing the whole thing. <laughs> What, like if it was if I used to go out on the weekends I'm going to the library on mm. a Saturday if That's I used right. to <laughs> whatever it was I'm mm. changing concerts to conferences like booths in the club to books mm. you know what I'm saying? yeah like I yeah yeah yeah. The whole vibe. yeah um and you know that was just the thought process and a mindset behind mm-hmm. it and then uh that was the first 90 days uh, wow. you know 
but the first 30 was specifically building business and then the the latter uh, 60 was um networking and just going to be around like my individuals and changing what i did on a daily basis man that is phenomenal 90 days man in total changing your whole entire life mm -hmm. trajectory whole nine so for young entrepreneurs out there right now who have to change that friend group and and it's tough yeah. being lonely. How do you just get through those tough times of trying to like figure out how to be on your own, transition, transform, which can be a hard predicament, man, to be um, in sometimes? Very interesting. Good question. Thank uh, you. Being lonely, you know, it kind of comes with it. Yeah. Uh, entrepreneurship. I was talking about that on live this morning, actually, mm -hmm. like the things that come with entrepreneurship. Right. A lot of it is um, loneliness. A lot of it yeah. is, um, man, people doubting you. That's true. Uh, what yeah. else is there? Man, just so many jealousy things. sometimes. Bro, yeah, jealousy, it can be a lot of that. Envy, yeah, hatred, yeah. loneliness, doubt, self doubt, mm -hmm. lack of self awareness. Yeah, like, there's yeah. so much. Yeah, um, but I think it was just I wanted so badly to have control of my time. Mm. I wanted control of my time. I wanted control of my life, and I was just I got to the point where I was tired. Like I was yeah. just sick of it, and. Um, I think that as humans, you know, we get motivated by one of two things, mm -hmm. inspiration or desperation. Mm. So most of us, unfortunately, we lean towards desperation. My back's against the wall. Like, I don't know what I'm about to do, so mm. i got to go achieve this. And that's what I did, too. Mm -hmm. But now, since I realized that we mot we're motivated by those two things, I choose inspiration now. So mm. I know that the wall is behind me. And if I don't act in inspiration, that it will eventually hit and then I'll be desperate and act. But I'd rather know that it's behind me and then look towards the good things and pull myself towards them than mm. wait till my back's against the wall to act on something I know I should be doing already. Yeah. So, um, but just for that person that, you know, what it feels like, um, you got to just know or you got to think about it, honestly, mm. like be become more self-aware. Like, are, what are you willing to deal with? Because mm. there's a lot that comes with this. Um, how many people are you willing to deal with? Do you have the skill set to manage people? Mm. Um you know, do you have resilience or grit? If you mm. lose everything, are you not going to judge yourself or think that wow. it's your your business is your identity? Because it's not. Mm. And it's, a, you know, sometimes we've got to learn those lessons the hard way. Yeah. So um, I think that there's just traits that you have to learn to grow into or just learn through experience or hopefully learn from other people that are sharing the journey mm -hmm. and learning from others' mistakes and not your own. Um, and those traits look like, you know, adverse, like, you know, being adverse to loneliness, resilience, grit, determination, yeah. perseverance, patience, mm -hmm. all of these things. And, you know, it's arguable whether you can learn it just through looking at someone else like me mm -hmm. tell you to do yeah. it, or if you have to go through those things. But hopefully, you know, we can share this with them and, you know, they... They choose to choose inspiration. Yeah, I love that, man. As y'all see, y'all, his mindset is different. Um, again, man, we've seen you acknowledging him, bro, just on so many platforms, giving out business advice, great game. And it's like, again, just mindset-wise, I'm like, yo, this guy's mindset is different, man. So today we're just going to keep just like honing in on mindset. Mindset, man, hey, if that's cool with you, bro. You knowing that you still sleep on the floor, mm -hmm. that's that's crazy. Like, yeah. why are you still in that mind so, frame of I'm going to still stay on the floor, I'm going to still stay grounded? Yeah. Why are you like that still? Um, You know, I think a lot of it is because when I was telling you I was living with four or five people in a one-bedroom apartment. Right, one, right. I didn't have a choice. Yeah. So it was like. You know, <laughs> either I was sleeping on the floor because we were switching between who took the bed that mm -hmm. night. Um, and mind you, I'm like, like 21, you know, like yeah. this was not very far in the past, 22, yeah. like 20, whatever. And, um, you know, one day I was just listening. To, I forget who it was, but he was like he just takes cold showers to motivate mm -hmm. himself to like work hard enough to earn a hot shower yeah, or yeah. sleep on the floor to work hard enough to earn a bed and then i realized that i was like wow like i used to like he's sleeping on the floor because he chose to mm. and i'm sleeping on the floor because i had no choice right and then when i became what some may deem as successful i was like let me continue this habit because when i wake up i want to feel like i gotta go hustle and go mm. after you know what it is that i was looking for when i was really sleeping on the floor because i didn't have a choice to yeah do so. 
Yeah, man, that's that's crazy. Um, also, as well, like a great thing about you is you're always seeking knowledge, gaining knowledge, mm -hmm. have consultants. Yeah. What sparks that for you? Because, man, you can say, yo, I'm the man now. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I got support black colleges. I got this brand. I made a meal in a day. I don't need no advice. But instead, you got a consultant for this, yeah. a consultant for that, multiple. Yeah. I mean, you could just have one. Mm -hmm. So what sparks that whole just thought process overall of I need advice on this field, that field, and this one too? Yeah. You know, I think that comes from, I just don't think that I'm the smartest person on earth, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, I strive for greatness, I strive for excellence, but I'm not like, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm dumb enough to try, but mm. smart enough to know that I'm not the smartest, yeah. you know? So yeah, I'm yeah, like yeah. right in the middle mm -hmm. pocket. So I'm like always just trying to seek new information. I think that what I realized is that I just enjoy learning. And mm. um, I enjoy learning because um, I think that we should become lifelong learners. Yes, sir. Because th there's like, you know, if I label success as a million dollars in a day, mm -hmm. once I hit that, it's a number, What's next? it's an arbitrary goal, yeah. it, gets, it goes to two million in mm -hmm. a day. But if my goal is I just want to learn every day, mm -hmm. become better every day, then that's a goal that can never be hit. So that's right. it's kind of like, a game, you know, it's mm -hmm. just like, I'd rather just, I enjoy the game, you know, the game of learning, the game of business, the game of becoming a better person. And I guess my morals and values align with just not thinking that I'm just better than anybody. Yeah. And I can learn from anybody. I always, I was talking about this this morning on live, where mm -hmm. it's like, when I, when I'm doing like meditation or whatever, mm -hmm. I always think of like, reach up to those that are doing better than me so that I can mm. exchange value and get value from them, reach mm. out to those on the same level as me as well to do the same, and then yeah. always reach down to pick up others that aren't as successful, but don't deem what they've gone through is not valuable information because mm -hmm. they may be able to share a, a context or a journey or something right. that can benefit me in the level that I'm at. So. Mm pick them up, but also don't shun, you know, what they've been through or yeah. the information that they give because you never know. It might mm. be valuable. So, um, yeah. yeah. Hey, that's tough, man. Meditation. That's yeah. so important. Um, entrepreneurs now, you know, everybody's talking about making money, making money, which is dope, of course. But like what you said, once you hit these goals, what's next? Yeah. You meditate. You yeah. don't have to. But mm. what creates that whole mindset of I'm going to meditate, I'm going to be still, yeah. I'll read books. Peace and quiet sometimes, and it's not always just being on your phone, watching TV, playing 2K. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't spend time to uh, do the work on themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and I just found that do doing the work on myself was what changed me to be the type of person I am today. Yeah. So when I realized that, you know, we can actively make a choice on who we want to be and our brain can be unwired and hmm. rewired, it was like, oh, thank God. Because, yeah. like, a lot of stuff is you know, from uh, DNA mm -hmm. and some of it is from habit. And, you know, I'm just even reading, it's like 95% of what we do by the time we hit 35, it's just the same thing that we did the day before. Wow. And I was like, man. And then the issue is, is that even if you have 5% of yourself that wants to do better and wants to succeed, your daily habits are so wired it's with 95%, 95 it's just yeah. not enough to get through it. That's right. And I was like, damn, so let me use the time that I have to mm -hmm. be able to craft the type of life that I want to live. And that came from meditation and, you know, doing some research like with uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza, a really mm -hmm. great artist uh, or uh, author, I mm -hmm. should say. He wrote a book called um, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, mm -hmm. another book called uh, Becoming Supernatural few books that I just learned. Sounds like it's heavy, too. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good stuff. And um, I, I just read uh, a lot of his information and mm -hmm. just learned meditation through him. Yeah. And um, the way and tactics that he kind of brings about allows you to identify the traits that you don't desire. Yeah. And then identify the times in which they happen. And then with like use your brain to realize that when that time is happening and then change the the action that you are performing mm -hmm. and then so you can go on to do something opposite right. so let's just say i sit down with my, my meditation and i think you know what's a trait that i exemplified this week that i'm not very proud of mm -hmm. maybe it was anger maybe it was jealousy mm -hmm. maybe it was whatever and i think of all right what happened for me to become angry jealous whatever let's just say I'm uh, eating dinner with a friend, and he said, man, I just profited $500,000 this mm. month. And you start comparing. I mean, you start comparing mm. naturally with people.
people do. Mm -hmm. So then I realized that. So then when I take my shower and I'm meditating, I'm like, I experience comparison, maybe a bit of jealousy. And I say it out loud to myself so yeah. that I can hear it. So, you know, this week I was playing basketball and I got into an altercation. <laughs> I called somebody out of their name and it was ang I was angry. Mm. And I, um, I had a lunch with a friend and he's making a little bit more money than me. And mm. I compared myself and I admit all of those things. I submit those things and I mm. release them from myself and I allow their equal opposite counterparts to come into my life. So replacing anger with joy and replacing jealousy with just abundance. And mm. now I think about what happened or what was transpiring when I felt that emotion. Mm. I was angry on the basketball court and then I relive the moment in my mind and I'm like, change. And I like say the word change. So then now, the next time when I'm on the basketball court and I'm thinking about saying something, I like the word change just hits my head. Mm. And then I'm like, oh, don't say that. So now over time, all of the traits that I don't desire are being changed because I'm forcing myself to relive them. And then when I relive them in real life, I'm thinking no change, do the opposite thing that is towards mm. the type of person that I would want to be. Man. And that, that's kind of, that's what I learned from like Joe Dispenza. That's so beautiful, that's, bro. Yeah. Self-awareness. How do we yeah. find that more? Because so many times I think our society has become somewhat narcissistic, if you will, of no self-accountability. It's yeah. always somebody else's fault. But instead, like you can say, yo, I was playing pickup basketball. I was tripping a little yeah. bit. You could have been like, yo, he should have made that right. shot or you should have yeah, caught this yeah, pass. Yeah, yeah, you should have yeah, picked yeah. him up right here and then yeah. we probably would have won. But instead it's like, no, I was wrong. Yeah. How do you find that? Because again, ego can be yeah. a crazy monster because you could be like, I'm successful. Yeah. I'm the man. I don't have to check myself anymore. Ego is the enemy, bro. Yeah. Get rid of it at all costs. Yeah. It does no good to yeah. nobody. Um, and yeah, like I guess I, f I felt more relieved when I took accountability for everything in my life. Hmm. It didn't feel good to me to say, you should have screened him on the pick and this <laughs> and that. Maybe I should have just been a better player, mm -hmm. you know, and made the shot or mm -hmm. whatever it is. Or, you know, when if I bring up, a, a for instance, a, a lunch, I'm, I'm just saying stuff, but mm -hmm. I, I, maybe I should just be a better businessman. Mm -hmm. Like. We have to realize that when we point at somebody, it's three fingers pointing back at us. That's true. So I'm pointing at you, but really, I want to have control of my life. So what do I look like giving away that power to somebody else and saying, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, you didn't do X, when really I could always make a, the situation my fault. Mm -hmm. And I try my best to do so. It might not be, um, I don't know if it's like the best trait to have. Mm -hmm. You know, some people, I feel like someone might say, like, that's toxic to think everything's your fault. I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah. But uh, it should serve me well to be like, I want full control over my life. And the mm. way that I have that is by taking accountability for every, sing that, every single thing that happens. Mm. If you punch me right now, I'll be like, man, I must have did something. What did like, I do to make a punch like, me? What, uh, like, <laughs> I, maybe I need security next yeah, time I come. That's true. So, like, you know, yeah. like, how can I constantly see what's going on and make it better by thinking that everything's my fault? Mm. I love that, man. Young entrepreneur who's killing the game. 26, 27? 27. 27, man. Under 30, well under 30, just doing amazing things. How do you handle expectations of yourself? Stress sometimes yeah. of running a multi-million dollar business day to day. Uh, employees sometimes having to deal with people, yeah. having to deal with doing ads, marketing, right. designs. How do you handle all the stress as a young yeah. entrepreneur? Uh, the stress, I think the biggest part of it was like realizing that Building these businesses and this money really means nothing, bro. I could tell that from you. Yeah, I get that mean, vibe. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah. My business, your business, yeah. what we build is not mm -hmm. our identity. Mm -hmm. Like, it's something that we built, but it doesn't mean that if you don't do good business or you're not super successful, that you're not a good person. Yeah. I I like to operate by like what we call like the law of the lid, mm. where the business will only grow to the mindset or the level of the founder or the entrepreneur. Wow. So knowing that, I'm like, bro, like <laughs> I, I need to become the best person to mm. become the best businessman. Yes, sir. Because when I, what I, I learned uh, throughout my process too is like, if the business is stuck somewhere, it's because you lack 
a character trait, mm. you lack a belief system, or you lack a skill set. Wow. One of the three. So do I not believe that I can go to this next level? What skill am I missing to get me to the next level? Or mm. what character trait? Do I lack leadership? Like, mm. what is it about me that needs to grow so that the business can grow as well? Mm. And when I realized that, it was like, bro, who cares what the business does? Mm. It's about being a better person so that the business has the ability to even grow in general. Mm. And the money is a byproduct of, a byproduct of it. But the money don't matter either. Because mm. when I had a lot of money, Things were cool, mm -hmm. but when I had nothing, the only thing that mattered to me was, does my mom think I'm a good person? Do I mm -hmm. believe that I'm a good person? And does God believe I'm a good person? That's all you needed. And that's all I needed. And that was enough for me to stand on. Mm -hmm. So when I thought about that, I was like, wow, everything else that people think matters doesn't. Wow. Money is useless. Mm -hmm. Like, bro. A yeah, lot of people don't want to hear that, though. They don't want to hear <laughs> yeah. it, yeah. it is what it is. Like, yeah. Money is a tool, bro, mm -hmm. not, a, not a goal. And use money to acquire access, yeah. assets, and mm. information. Mm. I'm trying to get assets that will allow me to get more money from doing nothing or mm. you know, relatively nothing. Mm. Access to rooms and people that mm. can elevate my mindset mm. or information. Because the only thing that's separating me and you from Warren Buffett and Jeff Bezos is that they know more than us. That's it. So, you know... Um, yeah, you know, they might not want to hear that, but yeah. it always astounds me. Is like, you know, somebody's willing to like do a five thousand dollar mentorship, seventy five hundred, fifty thousand mm. dollars. I'm like, you're willing to trade this useless piece of paper <laughs> for this valuable information? Mm. That's crazy, bro. Mm. So like, when you realize that, then you know, the business and the money, like, mm. who cares? Yeah, I'm loving this conversation, man. Like, so many people need this, and just shifting right where it's not always about this is my business and i did this through that again everybody's heard that but now like this side justin like people see it but not like all the time so yeah. i love that you know you're just being open vulnerable sure. we appreciate that man when was that moment that aha moment where it was like yo money isn't as important to me as what i once thought it was <laughs> so what was I that moment at all <laughs> mm. <laughs> literally bro you invested what like 50k nah, real estate uh, investment or something that was, like that too um, oh that too yeah yeah about yeah that. nah that wasn't even um that wasn't even all the money i had at that time that was just man i was just young. yeah just trying, trying to, things yeah i was trying to yeah i was trying to figure it out like do i was yeah. trying to move faster um in lanes that i didn't have experience mm -hmm. so that story real quick is like i moved to atlanta um, got introduced to somebody through a mutual friend, and then they were like, yo, bro is killing it in real estate. Somebody, mm. like a friend that I really trust, and still I'm cool with to this day, he just mm. didn't know he was working mm. out with this guy, and was like, yo, he always coming to the gym, he's killing it, go let network with him. Network with him, hey, I got this and that deal, I wanna do what you, took me by the deal, I'm like, cool, like, I'm, I just ran up some bread, I'm trying to invest, like, I'm trying to get out of this jam, like, mm. whatever it is. Sent all of the money off, never heard from bro. Wow. I was like, Okay, cool. Like that's a lesson, you know. Mm. You, you can't trust too fast. Yeah. <laughs> and um, you know, uh, gotta vet out relationships and then um, operate inside the things that you understand. Mm. So, um, but to, to answer your question though, is when I learned that money didn't really matter. Was um, I had thirty employees, mm. and um, you never know that you don't know how to, you know do something until it's happening to you that's a fact I had 30 employees and i had zero clue how to manage them at Man. all and um we were running out of cash in the business mm -hmm. um down to the point where we had twelve thousand in the bank Man. and um payroll was twelve thousand six hundred bi-weekly mm. so we were getting bi-weekly bi-weekly yeah, so we were getting killed in payroll got overhead just overhead yeah and, you know uh clothing like yeah, you got a building uh, yeah so then I, yeah, that was just payroll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, um, I had some money in my own personal bank account. The business had twelve thousand. Mm. I sent over the twelve thousand. Or excuse me, I sent over six hundred from my personal account into the business account. Then paid payroll, and right. then immediately had no money in the bank account, like at all. Zero yeah. Dollars, to to the point to where I was like. What am I going to say on Instagram and Facebook and to my family and friends tomorrow to let them know that, like, it was a great run, but it's over with? Mm. And um, that's when, like, the resilience and the grit and all of those mm -hmm. things kick in. And I was just like, bro, there's no way that tomorrow I can go and tell people 
that this thing didn't work if I didn't exhaust every option that mm. I have. I, just, I wouldn't be able to live I with feel myself. That. You yeah, know? So yeah, yeah. I was like, bro, I'm going to try whatever I can tomorrow. And if it don't work tomorrow, then cool. So it be just it. wasn't what it's supposed to be. Right. But I went home that day. I took a shower. Mm -hmm. And I was just, bro, I was, I was talking about this this morning. I was so just like drained that I couldn't even stand up in the shower. I'm just mm. sitting in the shower, bro. And that's when I was like, wow, I have like... People have seen massive drops. People mm. have seen, you know, NBA players and influencers, but I have zero dollars right now. Mm. Nothing at all. And I was like, what matters? And that's what goes to what we talked about. My family, <laughs> my close friends, my character, my morals, my values, my virtue, my mm. relationship with who I believe created me. And then I was like, yeah. I. And then even in the Bible, I, ch I had tried not to like get too biblical. You and all good, that. bro? Um, hey, I'm a PK, bro. So you good? Yeah, yeah I grew nah, up around I, that. Hey, I feel that. <laughs> but I always try to like my, you know, my judgments or my mm -hmm. values are not like. You don't want to push it on to anybody else. Over, so. Most definitely, most definitely. Um, but yeah, I remember. Uh, I think I took a screenshot of it the other day where it was like, um, you know, so I'm paraphrasing, mm -hmm. but you should be content with only having food and uh, and what is it? Food and don't help me. Hold on. Food and a place to sleep. Mm -hmm. I think it is. And mm -hmm. then I was like, damn, no clothes. Mm -hmm. It was food and clothing. Yep. And I was like, wow, like I'm sitting here taking a shower. Check those off the list. I'm sitting here taking a shower, yeah. a hot shower at that. Mm. And I'm, I don't got nothing, but I do have food and I do have uh, clothes. I got all the basic necessities I, I need. Said, bro, yeah. Money don't mean nothing. Wow. And from then on, I was like, bro, I don't care how much I make, who I affect, mm. what I do, whatever, as long as I got food and clothes, mm. that's all that I need. So mm. that's why even when like folks be like, you know, why you sleep on the floor? It's like, bro, sleeping on the floor is a blessing. It's <laughs> extra. Like mm. having comforters, like yeah. pillows is extra. Mm. Like, and then I never forget, I went to Belize like a, a month ago. I know it's probably beautiful. It's great out there, yeah. bro. I went to Belize, but bro, minimum wage out there is... Um, 375 Belize and Man. their money is two times or excuse me our money is two times theirs so Man. the real minimum wage is like a dollar 75 a dollar 50 US and no house out there had air condition wow. and um I was FaceTiming this girl that I met out there and I was showing her my apartment mm -hmm. like just giving her a little tour wow. or whatever and yeah. she was like you have carpet <laughs> like wow that's you luxury like you must be rich like <laughs> that's crazy like, bro what <laughs> and I was like bro people be tweaking if it ain't no AC in you a building me? yeah at all. so when i started to realize that i was like bro people got the wrong idea mm. of perspective bro yeah and bro if you got clothes and something to eat bro you so blessed mm. and even having any of the things that i have is just a cherry on top of clothes and food yeah man giving out so much game that was beautiful bro uh said she'll tell you it was a time i remember where and i'll be honest i thought it was people just hating about the orders, all that stuff. And I told her, I said, yo, when they had y'all, I'm on the shade room, you handled that so perfectly. Interviewing wise, everything was just perfect. You was just calm, collected, mm -hmm. got to the point, killed it. In times of crisis, yeah. and that's what entrepreneurs don't that's understand. Good. It'll be times to where somebody, we've gone through it, to where it could be a crazy client, it could yeah. be a customer who maybe never even ordered anything, right. just saying, I didn't get my order. Yeah. And then at the same time, it's people who don't understand you and Corey just started this thing. Mm. It grew yes, astronomically. Like, yeah. you can't plan for that. And right. then, two, you can't serve everybody right. all the time, right? right. Like, right. things happen. So yeah. how do you stay calm? And then, two, how do you handle crisis yeah. and you aren't blaming all the customers? Yeah, that's good. Um, Thank you. Staying calm is, uh, that's when I, like, you know, lean on meditation and whatnot. Yeah. Because what it really taught me was to have control of, over my feelings. Yeah. Um, and my emotions. Yeah. Because when I realized that the thoughts that I have are going to then dictate the feelings that I have, my feelings dictate my behavior. Mm, my behavior it's a trickle down dictates effect. It's my personality. Right, person, right. And then my personality is my personal reality, mm. how I see the world, it's my deep. perspective. Yeah. So thoughts, feelings, feelings, behavior, <laughs> behavior personality personality personal reality mm. and i was like so if most of this comes from the things that i think and my feelings then i have to have a very strong control over them mm. so no shade room interviewer mm. 
business partner, mm. random person on the street is going to be able to sway me because I know how valuable it is to be able to control my own thoughts because mm. they're going to dictate how I see the world. Mm. And um, so, you know, over practicing that, you know, yeah. many years, you know, year, two years, meditating daily, mm -hmm. and getting into that vibe, um, I just kind of like, you know, I am yeah. how I am now and, you know, rarely can, you know, be moved off of that. So mm -hmm. I kind of just stay calm in that way. Bro, but you know, folks is human. You know Come with the territory. So it. It's just, yeah. I'm human, bro. And, yeah. You know, it, it is what it is. Sometimes I might yeah. be upset, but then um, I always just go back to empathy every yeah. single time, bro. Yeah. Empathy. Like, if someone if someone cuts me out, if someone says whatever, and most of the time when the customers do it, you're most likely right, bro. Mm. It is what it is. Like, for especially the shade room situation, mm -hmm. we didn't ship those people their stuff on time. Mm -hmm. You have every right to be upset with mm -hmm. me. So the things that you're saying are okay, but if it's just someone that is just being negative in general, it's emotional. Then it's like you you going through something. <laughs> yeah, that you're projecting it ain't on even me, about me. I feel very bad for mm -hmm. you, bro. Like, mm -hmm. man, what can I do to help? Because for your day to be so bad that you want to just project it on somebody else. Mm -hmm. There has to be some way that I can help you because I don't want you to feel that way anymore. Yeah. No matter what you say to me, I'll be fine. <laughs> so, you know, um, I think handling or being calm came from the practice of it over many years. Yeah. And then handling those types of situations just comes from taking the blame like we talked about earlier. Yeah. If the customer didn't get their stuff, it's my fault some type of way. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I need to I need to figure out what's in the operations and mm -hmm. the communications of the business, the manufacturing, whatever yeah. it is, and just move forward with it. But, yeah. You know, no no reason to like be upset. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, there's enough people upset already. Yeah. I might as well try to just solve the problem. Yeah. You know? That's powerful, man. Losing it all again. You gave out so many gems about operating during that time of just craziness and stress and. Right now, man, it's a young entrepreneur right out there, you know, in their 20s, trying to kill it. And they might be only having $20 in their account, yeah. negatives. How do you keep trucking forward, even in those times of not knowing where that next meal is coming from? But you yeah. know, yo, I got this calling on my life. I got this great idea, and I'm still trying to do it. Yeah. How do you push through those times? Do you have another option? Hmm. <laughs> like, mm. Bro, honestly. Yeah. Like, what's the alternative? Mm. Like do nothing mm -hmm. and have no money and make <laughs> yeah. no money not eat be mm -hmm. homeless whatever it may be or try to fight for what it is that you believe i just chose the chose the latter mm -hmm. i didn't feel comfortable you know not doing anything because i know what that feels like already so like you know i guess um there's a few mantras that I feel like I told myself over time that really helped me um, when I was in the shower, repeating mm. this to myself over and over again. Like, this this business is not my identity. This, mm. you know, this idea that I have is not my identity. It's just something that I'm called to do. God didn't bring me this far to forsake me and to leave me. Mm. I didn't come this far to just come this far. And even if it doesn't go right, that is not a, a, a hit or attack on my character. Mm. So once I just kept repeating those things to myself, anytime I met was met with adversity, oh, this went wrong. Okay, cool. I like I've been through the worst already. Mm. This is nothing near that. Mm. Uh, but I was having a conversation with uh, somebody at a networking event the other day, and he was like, "Bro, we um we got a real estate deal that we got all of our money in. We need like twenty thousand more dollars to just like get it through." And he was like, "How do you how do you deal with the the adversity?" And I was like. Bro, if I told you what I done been through, you'd be like, bro, what? Because he was mm -hmm. like, my pride won't let me call a friend and ask for $20,000. My ego won't let me. I said, that's your issue, bro. Mm -hmm. And you'll, you'll never be, quote unquote, successful with that type of mentality. Because, and I told him the story, like, imagine me, like, no no money, just spent all of it on, you know, the payroll. Take care I'm, of your I'm team. In, I'm in the shower by myself yeah. with no money. You got a net worth your real estate deal mm. and the thing that's separating you from the success that you want is a phone call to someone to ask them to borrow twenty thousand dollars to push a deal over and then you'll give them a 10 percent return in 30 days mm. i was like what's the alternative you lose everything in the deal because you're too cool to call somebody mm. and um i think a lot of us go through that too but i think 
to answer the question is like you know when you when you need something to push through you got to forge those mantras that you have mm -hmm. you, you can use the ones that i came up with myself of uh, myself for for me um that are borrowed from the bible and probably mm -hmm. other places mm -hmm. um or create your own and then ask yourself what's the alternative mm -hmm. what else would i do right now yeah so hopefully that helps nah most definitely bro like this is phenomenal man hearing you talk about the bible uh spirituality meditation i could tell you're probably heavy in the spirituality knowing like who you are as a person mm -hmm. how do you like tap in when it comes to uh, spirituality knowing yeah. who you are you know as i've been thinking about it i'm still trying to i'm still on my own journey just trying yeah. to find out what i believe the truth is right um but I was raised Christian, mm -hmm. so that's something that I identify with. I understand. So um, I had Bible study Tuesdays, um, church on Sundays, even though, you know, this, we're building a relationship rather than practicing mm -hmm. a religion. Yeah. But, um, you know, I still do those things because uh, that's the, what I identify with. But yeah. I still identify myself as like, uh, like a spiritual being in general, mm -hmm. you know, just trying to figure this shit out, man. Yeah. So, you know... Um, that's where I'm stand. That's where I stand as far as like religion, spirituality, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I still feel like I'm on my own personal journey, trying to figure it out for myself. But, yeah. Um, that's yeah. You're just trying. That's that's what it is. I get it, I, man. I, I, there's some things that I'm very good at, and other things I'm still learning, and I'm mm -hmm. not ashamed or you know upset to yeah. admit like I'm not all the way there spiritually. I'm still growing and learning in that way. And yeah. um, you know, now that we found some success. Um, I also start to realize too that it's like <laughs> when I got to those down places, who was the first person I'm calling on? Mm. You know what I'm saying? And then I was like, then why do we not do it the opposite way? Wow. And why don't we build that relationship with whomever we believe is, you know, created us and then have that relationship because maybe I would have had better discernment throughout my business process when Hey, no, don't do that. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. I could, oh, my, like, stand in tune. You know, boom, cool. Yeah. So um, I think that that might serve as somebody as well. It's like mm -hmm. instead of going for the money and the success and the wealth and fame and this and that first, go for the spiritual first. Because mm -hmm. when you when you when you get into that that lane where it's like I've been chasing money and now I got it and then I lost it all, first person you gonna call on is God, bro. Please give me trying out to of be this. transactional. Like you know, what I'm yeah. Saying? So um. You know, or whatever. I mean, who knows? Yeah. Everybody's experience is different, but yeah. just a thought. Yeah. yeah. I love that, man. Uh, when you wake up in the mornings and now you have all of this success, I guess, you know, you could say, um, just everything around you, right? Yeah. How do you feel, A, and then B, how do you stay grounded at the same time? Very interesting, bro. I wish, I wish that I can transfer the feeling that I had yeah. when millions of dollars hit the account mm. nothing changes <laughs> at all it's just that number in the account literally nothing yeah. Changes. <laughs> yeah nothing at all i yeah. was like cool, cool. <laughs> like, that's what's up yeah and nothing bro mm. so like if people can only understand the biggest changes in my life that were like you know the realizations that I had, mm. the the character traits I built, the belief system I built, that changed me. You know mm. what I'm saying? But the money, when it hit, it was a number. And I was like, wow, you know, yeah. how can we grow that number? Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So, um, and, you know, I would even challenge people to, instead of setting money goals like we talked about earlier, yeah. set goals based on other things like impact, um, mm. which will undoubtedly turn into money so yeah. if, if instead i say i want to make 500 or you know a hundred thousand dollars a month i want to impact a hundred thousand people's lives that attended hbcus i can mm. guarantee you'll make a lot of money if you if you change your goal to that mm. and it's a lot more selfless you know yeah. um so you know the success doesn't feel many doesn't change anything. yeah if anything, it just amplifies more who you are. Mm -hmm. And if you're not the type of person that would be humble and gracious and empathetic and et cetera, then those character traits that aren't so, uh, you know, beautiful will be yeah. amplified as well. Yeah. And then inevitably you'll go back to having nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. then you'll just have to learn that lesson again. Yeah. So I think um, sometimes people spend a lot of time not working on themselves and making a lot of money, but just end up repeating the same cycle over and over again because they still have character traits, belief systems, or skill sets to acquire that they haven't acquired to sustain the level mm -hmm. of, 
money that they've been able to make. Man, you read my mind because one of my last two questions, sure. uh, making money leads to temptation, you know, sometimes because now you have all the tools. You can get access. You can do pretty yeah. much whatever you want to do. You right. can be around whoever you want to be around. How do you handle temptation being young, 27? You can pretty much have the world in your palms. You're here in Atlanta, mm -hmm. so you have everything here. But how do you also know, all right, instead of going out all the time, yeah. I'm going to stay in. I'm going to read some books. Because, yeah. I mean, you could be at the strip clubs. You could be over here. You could be doing this. <laughs> like, you could be wilding. Yeah, but instead, yeah. you just calm, laid back, and chilling. So how do you handle temptation sometimes, handle being young? It. You know, I think um, I'm still learning yeah. the balance of yeah. it. Um, because I found that... Um, I'm pretty extreme, you know, mm. where it's like, uh, and l like, so when I was in college, I was extreme, party, mm -hmm. have fun, do whatever I want. Yeah. And then now I'm extreme, no drinking, no, uh, no smoking, no sex, no this mm. and that. Um, excuse me. And I mm -hmm. think that, um, I think that what it ended up being was realizing what was truly important to get to the goals that I wanted to have. And, um, you know, I can kind of hit on each piece because I think yeah. that may help. One day I was drinking and then I threw up, you know, mm. we, how we do. Yeah. And then after I threw up, something told me it was like, you drink so much, but you don't got nothing to celebrate for. Mm. And I was like, wow. And it just hit me. And I was you like, got to call me out like that. I'm that's like, probably how you sheesh. felt. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. bro, that's crazy. Yeah. Like, you drink, I'm drinking every weekend, mm. Thursday. Uh, you know, Thursday, Thursday, Friday at the club, Saturday mm. at the club, Sunday, bottomless mimosas. Mm. I'm drinking four, four times out of the, out of the week, mm. uh, out of seven days. And I'm like, bro, you drinking so much, we don't got nothing to celebrate for. So that day I told myself, like, bro, I'm going to stop drinking until I truly have something worth celebrating for. And that was wow. one. Smoking, never really got into it. Just not my vibe. Tried it a few times. Didn't like how it made me feel. So, mm. you know, for me, that was just that. Um, so it was easy for me to not do that. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, sex. It was um, when I realized, you know, there's a few things there. One, how important life is, you mm. know. So I was talking to my brother about this, and he was like, bro, like, you don't masturbate, you don't mm -hmm. do this, you don't do that. I'm like, yeah, bro, because, like, imagine this. Like, you masturbating, and you you wasting life, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm like, you wasting it on yourself. And then even with girls, like, let's just say she's not somebody that you desire to have a meaningful relationship with or a wife or whatever it may be, you literally wasting your time, your life force, your energy, and her time for no reason. Yeah, you, you could no create desire. a whole life. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, bro, you masturbating and having sex with no intentionality mm. on using those things what they're for, which mm. is to procreate life. Mm. And once I realized, and I kind of like tied that into what I believe it's used for, mm -hmm. it's it's decently easy for me to be like, you know, shorty want to talk or whatever. <laughs> I'm like, you, you, you're not the type of person that got the same mm. values and visions of my life. We don't enjoy the same things. And, um, you know, I don't feel the need to have to do those things with yeah. you um, because it's not contributing to either one of us. Mm. So, um, yeah, I think that helped yeah. on the, like, nah, it was, those, those man. skills. Yo, you killing it. But, Second. Hey, bro, yeah. I'm not even, I'm, preface it with this bro. yeah I'm please a regular person i like, get it you know, yeah so high, you like yo i'm not jesus i'm hey, not here bro, yeah that's it all. yeah I, I, when i went to police i drank me some liquor yeah you know, rightfully it, so it is so, yeah but uh, that was that was the first time i had in six months so mm. you know but it was well deserved yeah, yeah. 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 So, so how about this how do you not feel guilty about enjoying justin sometimes and not always being so serious yeah um i think i just realized what i actually like um, mm -hmm. I like business. Mm -hmm. I like growing business and I like becoming excellent and being a better person. So for me, for my type of lifestyle, I can go six months working straight and then go watch one movie and be like, whew. I got what I needed. Perfect vacation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that's just me, though. Yeah. But for other people, they mean, may need, like my mom, I got to mm. go to a tropical island mm. once a month. Mm. I, I need that vacation. I'm like, cool. That's perfectly yeah. fine. So. I just don't judge myself based on the standards of what others believe is a mm. balance because mm. that's a balance for you and not for me. Mm. And that's perfectly fine. And then I also realized too is that we as entrepreneurs say that we desire to be the 1% or mm -hmm. the 0.001%. Yeah. And if that's the truth, then the things that work for you aren't going to be the same as for the 99% of people. And as well as your thought process and ideas aren't going to be the same as them either. Mm -hmm. So if I'm 1%, 
the masses are going to be thinking the exact opposite of what I think. Mm. So when I realized that, I was like, well, working a lot works for me. I enjoy the movies and I like ice cream. Mm. So I'm going to do that I'm every six simple. months yeah. when I need to or yeah. whenever I want. Yeah. And then you go and do what the masses do and enjoy yourself every weekend. That's just not what fits and works for me. Yeah. It works for the vision and the values that I have on my life. But I'm not judging you. Mm. And I'm not going to beat myself up about it if I go and, you know, whatever, do something on the weekend that I wasn't mm. supposed to do or it didn't align with what I got going on because mm. I'm winning the vote overall. Mm. So, like, you know, if there's 365 days in a year and then I drink four or five out mm. of all of them, overall, I still won. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? So I still won the vote. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think that uh, I think that that's a big piece of, like, how I don't how I don't judge myself. And um, I'm trying to think of anything else there. Um I don't know. I guess I'll leave it there. Yeah. Hey, that was more than enough, bro. Last five minutes, man, of the show. Oh, cool. You've been phenomenal. Thank so you. much game, bro. Second to last question for real this time. Oh, sure. um, on your page, bro, uh, one thing that like spoke to me just heavily was about enjoying the process mm -hmm. and not about that end result all yeah. the time. And man, so many times, you know, as creatives, entrepreneurs, we can be like, the moment I make this much, right. I'll be happy. <laughs> or when I get this many uh, subscribers or, or <laughs> followers, I'll be happy. And then you can get to that point yeah. and it's like, Matter of fact, Brett Favre, I remember uh, he said this. He was like, I won the Super Bowl, and I realized I wasn't happy. Right. I was like, when's the next game? Right. I'm like, dang, bro, you played 16 regular season games, yeah. four playoff games. You played 20 games in total, and you're right. still not satisfied. Right. So how do we enjoy just trying to get there sometimes? Yeah, I think it's um, we have to detach the outcome mm. and attach ourselves to the process. Because what I really realized over time is that, like, you know, Every time you hit that goal, it always moves, bro. Mm, Every single yeah, time yeah. you hit the goal, it always moves. So um, I really just try try my best to be in love with the things that I do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like that post said, the man who loves walking will walk further than the man who loves the, the journey. Or excuse me, the, um, the destination. Yes, sir. So um, how, do I, how do I build that? Um, I think it's by being self-aware, and we mm -hmm. can go back to that. Being self-aware and knowing what you actually enjoy, because most of us are setting arbor arbitrary goals based on the mass mass idea of what is the right thing to do in entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So if I'm setting my goal based on what people are telling me is the right thing to do in this space, I'm not even thinking for myself. Mm -hmm. So I have to be extremely self-aware to know what it is that I like to do and mm -hmm. what it is that I want to enjoy the process on. And then if I can find something that I am good at, that I like to do, that just happens to make me some money, then I won anyways. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, man. That's crazy. Last question now. Yeah. Where do you see Justin within the next five to ten years? Uh, you as a businessman, yeah. person, spiritual being, and also where can everybody follow you? And yeah. then two, who would you like to see on the show next? Oh, okay, cool. Um, so uh, all of my social media is like Justin P. You yes, sir. Justin P. Um, yeah. And you know, you can find you can find me there. Um, where I want to be in the next few years, you know. I want to I wanna really take my mom's business to the next level. Mm -hmm. I want to repay her for <clears throat> raising me to be the type of person I am today. Mm -hmm. um, my goal is to take her business to 100 million bucks. Mm -hmm. um, I think that would be fun to do. Mm -hmm. um, and then other than that, I want to make sure that the thing, everything that I do is aligned with the type of person that I want to be. Mm -hmm. So, for instance... I enjoy building business, mm -hmm. I enjoy my family, mm -hmm. and I enjoy, um, you know, some of the things that I'm passionate about, whether mm -hmm. it be real estate, this, whatever it is. So what is the one thing that I can do that will allow me to suffice for all of the things that make me a person? Mm -hmm. And when I realized that, it was like, I want to do business. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Maybe it doesn't have to be direct-to-consumer business, but mm -hmm. just business building in general. So. I love my mom. I love mm -hmm. my family. We talked about the people that are around me. Mm -hmm. So why not do business with someone that I really care about? Mm -hmm. And why not build a business doing that? I care about my personal brand. I can build her business and use the learnings from building a new business with her to talk about with my personal brand. Mm -hmm. And then the money that I make from my personal brand, not having to take anything from my mom's business, I can use for real estate, crypto, mm -hmm. investing in myself, NFTs, whatever it may be. So I think I see myself just like really focusing on one thing mm -hmm. for 
one like one thing for the next five ten years mm -hmm. and taking that to a hundred million hopefully a billion bucks not because of the number but because i just enjoy building business mm -hmm. um and then being able to live out some of the other fun stuff that i want to do that i'm passionate about yeah and um you know i think if i can do that document it all and give that back to the people to kind of learn from the things that I'm going through, then, you know, hopefully I'll help a few people along the way. That's beautiful, man. Yeah. Bro, thank you so much for your time. Uh, before we leave, who would you like to see next That's on the good. platform, man? Um, who should we get on this joint, man? You can name whoever, friends, family. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Uh, we we got we to gotta name someone that we can we can get up here. Okay. Um, we should get... We should get Jaleel to come up here. Okay. My roommate, he does all of um, the production for Earn Your Leisure. Oh, bet. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I think that'll be a good thing. I heard him. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's, let's say that. Let's go to Hey, him. let's make it happen. Yeah. Got it on wax, bro. <laughs> Man, thank you so much. Uh, you've you, been bro. open, vulnerable. You gave out so much game. Keep doing what you're doing from the bottom of like all of our hearts, bro. We appreciate y'all. Y'all killing the game, and the best is yet to come. So much love to you, bro, appreciate for real. It, bro. Yes, sir. Y'all make sure, man, to follow Justin, support black colleges if you're not already. Show them love. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe, and share this content. Shout out to Aaron, Devin, Sid, whole entire team. And this is not possible without y'all's support, y'all's love. So, man, again, we appreciate y'all. Bless be your host, Caleb Smith. Keep killing the game. Peace. See y'all soon.